Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split Stay DIY, and a couple weeks ago, I was sitting on my couch, and I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool if you had an RGB LED, and you had a potentiometer, and you just swept through all the colors it could do, just in one really nice movement. Doesn't everyone have those thoughts on a normal day while they're just watching, like, reruns of Shameless and cross-stitching? Well, that idea evolved into this tiny little silly project where I apply power to the circuit, I turn the potentiometer, we are indeed swirling through all of the colors. Now, is there any point to this? Absolutely not. No, it has no purpose. It's not useful in any way. Um, it's, it doesn't even give you a readout. Like I did a project a while ago, the NeoPixel dialer, which is kind of a similar concept. It had a NeoPixel strip in it and three potentiometers. So you were adjusting each uh, of the three color values, uh, red, green, and blue, to dial in different colors. And there was a readout on that screen telling you the value of this. This is kind of that concept, but with one potentiometer. So it's, it's basically just this satisfying uh, electronic desk toy that serves zero purpose. Uh, so this whole thing is being run by a Trinket M0. Uh, I chose a Trinket because this really doesn't require a lot of pins and I thought it'd be cool to try to use as many pins as humanly possible. Also, another reason why I use the Trinket M0 is that board has a, a dot star, which is an RGB uh, LED, an addressable RGB LED on board. And when I brought the initial version of this project that was just running on a regular general at tiny Trinket, uh, a, a few people said, wouldn't it be cool if the whole box lit up the same color as the LED sticking out, and I was like, you're so right. So that's why I switched to the dot star. So basically in the code, which we'll look at shortly, the dot star is doing exactly what the RGB LED is when you turn the potentiometer, and that's why it matches up. So other than the trinket, there is of course the RGB LED. Then we have a potentiometer here, a linear, because otherwise logarithmic, it has that like kind of bump going on, because uh, usually for audio applications, linear keeps it nice and smooth, which you need for an application like this. And we also have a switch, and that's a power switch, uh, so that we can uh, plug a battery in, uh, and the Trinket does have that battery power pin, uh, and so the switch is just shorting out ground to the battery, and the battery is connected via JST connector, and yeah. So this is version two. Uh, version 1 for the circuit, I first of all forgot the idea of a power switch and a battery. Helpful for projects that are supposed to be small and compact like this. It wasn't the best. It needed USB in that case, which is not ideal, uh, which then meant I couldn't put the back on the housing. Of course, the initial printing of the housing, the back didn't fit anyway. Iterative design, am I right? And then I also... I. The wire I used was just solid core wire, which is what I always use. And getting it into the housing was, was rough. Like, it, I felt like something was going to break. I'm still shocked nothing broke. Um, so on the second iteration, I used silicon wire. Real thin little guys. And, oh man, what a difference. I'm never going back. Next time I'm doing any electronics or going into a housing, it's all silicon. So as you'll see in the footage, hopefully, everything's wired really freeform. Like it's just silicon wire coming off the LED. Uh, the LED has uh, resistors uh, soldered directly to the three uh, pins for red, green, and blue. Um, other than that, just wire directly to everything. I have this kind of like meeting point where all the grounds come together and to have one ground to rule them all and then one shorter piece of silicon wire goes directly to the ground pin on the trinket, and that's what's grounding everything. And to wire something like that, you do have to kind of really think ahead. So if you just take your time, really think connection by connection, then you'll be good. I don't recommend like putting wires on everything and then be like, oh, now I just connect everything because you'll, you'll forget something. And also, I was really careful to put heat shrink on every single connection as well. That's something I tend to forget. So also think of the order raw operations like that because often I'll remember, oh yeah, heat shrink. Oh, I've, I've closed the connection. So I, I have to like desolder it now to put it back on. Oh, I'm too lazy to do that. I'll just hot glue it. That's the circuit side of things. Let's go to the computer and talk about the code side of things and the CAD side of things. All right, the code. 
uh, coding an Arduino for the first time in a while is because uh, there are some functions I was using. It was just easier to accomplish with Arduino. So first, I'm going to clean the dot star library because there's a little dot star on the trinket. Uh, there's only one dot star on board. Uh, the 7 and 8 are the pins that control the dot star on the M0 board. Uh, they're internal pins. So, uh, and if you're ever using any of the Adafruit M4 or M0 uh, boards, look at the pinout. Uh, it will tell you which internal pins the dot star is using. Uh, so then uh, I used a couple of constant integers, uh, PWM minimum, PWM max, 0, 255. And these are the pins on the trinket that are connected to the RGB pins on the LED. Uh, we have some stuff for the dot star here, px.begin, px.show. Uh, and then pin mode, just setting those LED pins as outputs. We're going to the loop. We've got our pot. Uh, that's analog read of analog pin zero. That's for our potentiometer. And then we're doing um, a range mapping here, uh, which if you've ever done any analog stuff with Arduino, you're probably familiar with. We're mapping so that the uh, pot, which is going to read a range between zero and 1023, makes it so that zero and 255. So it's converting that range so that when I have it at zero, it's zero, but then when I turn it all the way up, it's only going to read up to 255. Then we have another mapping, RGB range, where we're taking the range value here um, that was already mapped here, so 0, 255, and we're putting in the PWM min, PWM max, I should have PWM min, PWM max here, and then mapping it from zero to six. And that's because how this is working is it's basically like chunks. Uh, it's looking at the spectrum of color as these six chunks so that we're going like red to yellow to green to blue to violet. Probably be helpful to kind of explain it visually for a moment. Let's go into paint. So basically what's going to happen is there's going to be these six sections, right? So the way that colors mix for the first thing, we're going to have red be at 255, and then we're going to have it go down so that it's then at zero. It will remain low for here, but then it will come back up, and it will be high. So basically, all three of these colors are going to have two uh, rounds, let's call them rounds, uh, where they're high, two rounds where they're adjusting, so going down and going up, and then two rounds where they're completely off. The same thing happens with green. Green starts off going up, and then it's high for two, then it comes down, and then it's low. And blue starts off low for two, and then goes up, it's high for two, and goes down. Could be more like yellow, green, this could be more red, orange, it's going to be teal, blue, and then this could be more like your violet, indigo kind of situation going on, and this could be more like purple, pink. So it's not necessarily an exact, um, like I wouldn't say that every color is on for an equal amount of time, but that kind of gives you visually an idea of what's going on in the code. So we can see this being applied in the code here. Uh, so in the when we first start off, when the potentiometer is all the way down, um, what's happening is red is high. So you have a red LED to start off. Blue is low, there's no blue, and as we uh, pull up the potentiometer, the amount of green is going to increase. So that when we get to our next step, green is at a value of 255, blue is still zero, as you can still see here, but red is going to start going down so that when we get to the next thing, red is down, green is still high, and blue is going to start to go up. So this happens through the thing like different alterations of that. And we're using switch statements. This is the first time I ever used a switch statement. Good for me. Uh, so that, that's how it's getting all spread out. But the way that this is the core of what's working here uh, is the fact that we're able to map all these values so that they're like equaling each other, basically. 
And the way that I figured out exactly which value would work the best, I used a lot of the the serial monitor to read what the potentiometer was doing, um, and that made it a lot easier because the actual division, like it didn't necessarily match up perfectly. I had to adjust it a little bit for what it was doing in real world. Uh, but yeah, that's the code. And of course, the um, dot star is mimicking what the RGB LED pins are doing. And when it was just going to be on or off, I just used digital right high low for the pins rather than doing like analog right um, and having it be like a value of 255. So something. But yeah, that's the code. Now let's look at the CAD to see the box that we're putting this thing in. All right, and now we're in Fusion. Uh, just to kind of talk about a couple of things that I did. First off, I mean, fairly obvious, we have holes for the LED, the potentiometer, and uh, we have a snap fit backing here. This is all done with sketches. Uh, for the snap fit, I followed along with the Ruiz Brothers snap fit tutorial. I've used it a couple times, mentioned it before as well, but I'll put a link down in the description in case you want to follow along. Rainbow action we have going on. I actually imported uh, a picture of a rainbow as a DXF file. And then what I did is I just traced it with splines um, to be able to trace it out and make a sketch object. Um, and then when I finished tracing it, I just extruded in a bit to make it so that it's this raised surface. And it translated pretty well to printing, uh, I have to say. And then for the smiley face in the front, um, I just drew that with, with sketches. Uh, I did a mirror, though, so that the eyes would be at the same spot and the mouth would be even. Otherwise, it would have probably looked a little wonky. Uh, and then we also have a cutout on the side here for the power switch, uh, and that just makes it so that it can fit snugly in. Uh, the LED cutout, I should mention, is sized for um, an LED holder, a plastic LED holder. Uh, for the final version, I'm going to expand the sizings just a little bit because I did have to use this to kind of round out some of the, the openings, just a, a smidge. But yeah, that's, that's basically the CAD portion. Uh, and you might see this little circle here. That's to hold in the notch for the potentiometer. There's a little notch on the front, and that just makes it so it's a little bit of a snugger fit. Um, but yeah, that's a housing. Uh, and I printed it in this orientation so that it didn't need supports and printed in clear filaments as well. Uh, a bit of a unique orientation and getting it like that in Slicer was kind of an experience, but because uh, it was like I was putting in like by two degree increments because you can't just twist it in um, Slick 3R. Uh, the new Slicer 2.0 by Prusa you can, I guess. I haven't tried it yet, but yeah. But that's how I printed it. Printed well. And we have our happy little Fisher Price esque. Uh, dial-in rainbow toy. Yeah. And so with the powers of the code and the CAD and the circuit combined, we have this rainbow swirly thing. I don't really know what to call it. I guess rainbow swirl works. That's what I was calling it when I'd like post works and progress shots. But, and it is just kind of a, like a swirl, swirl. It's very calming. Especially the smoothness of the potentiometer. I could literally just like do this all day. Uh, but I will have a project write up up somewhere uh, and I'll be sharing the files uh, on Thingiverse if you want to print your own and put together a little circuit like this. Uh, it's a pretty simple project. It's just kind of visually pleasing. Uh, and I think the, the rainbow and the smiley face thing, it makes it kind of kid friendly. So if you want to give your, your kid a box full of wires that makes pretty colors, like you could, you could do that. That's, that's fun. Or, you know, the kids at heart, like me. It kind of reminds, like this rainbow that I found kind of reminds me of Fisher Price. I was getting some major Fisher Price vibes and that is basically why I chose to push it into the sides there. Uh, but yeah, let's go do it for this video. If you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments down below. Uh, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content like this. And until next time, I'll just be sitting here swirling this fun RGB LED.